With this guitar lesson video, we'll take the first step with songwriting on guitar by showing how to write a basic three chord song in any major or minor key. Along with guitar tabs, chord diagrams, and practice rhythm tracks, we'll cover it all with a step-by-step -step approach. Now, there are many methods or approaches you can use when it comes to taking that first step with songwriting. Uh, some will start with the Do, Re, Mi scale, where you'll focus on degrees to determine chords in a key. Uh, you may have heard the terms uh, one, four, and five chords used before. Uh, others may start with the circle of fists. Uh, it's a famous diagram where you're told to either work with it or memorize it. Uh, but what we're going to do with this lesson, we're going to assume you're starting totally from scratch. And with that, uh, we have two basic objectives. Uh, number one, uh, the first will be to learn a method where using just your guitar, you'll be able to, on your own, determine the three primary chords in any major or minor key. And then the second goal will be to simply hear how these primary chords harmonize together in various keys. And in my opinion, uh, that's a great first step. And then you go to the next step where you focus on degrees, the circle of fifths, and the do, re, mi scale. And those topics, uh, once you get through this lesson, uh, will be a lot easier to understand. Now, regardless of what style of music you're listening to, just about every piece of music you've ever heard will fall into the range of a certain key. A uh, key is a group of notes or chords that are arranged to harmonize together that will produce a certain effect, tone, or mood. And there are dozens of chords that you can draw from a key to write a song. Uh, and the first step in understanding how to do this is to learn how to arrange a basic three chord song in any key. And so if you have this concept down, this foundation of starting with a three chord structure, uh, that will lead to learning how to songwrite in all styles of music. Now in order to come up with a three chord progression in any key, you still have to have that starting point of what chord you're going to start with. And for a lot of guitarists, even beginners, this is where the creative uh, process comes in. Uh, say you haven't been playing guitar for a long time, but you have a handful of songs you can play. You may have come up with a two or three chord progression, or even a real basic riff that sounds good to you. And you tend to keep going back to it. Um, but the problem is you don't know what key you're in, and you don't know how to build upon that idea. Uh, and that's where understanding this music theory, three chord progressions to start, will come in handy. Um, let's provide an example here, a real basic one. We're going to start with just a one chord idea. And that's going to be an A major chord. And let's say you're hanging around uh, with that A major chord, and you even come up with a strum pattern. yourself, man, I really like that strum pattern, I like the way that A chord sounds, I want to build or write a song around that A chord. In other words, uh, you want to write a song in the key of A, uh, with A major being that first primary chord we want to build on. Well, for every major chord, there are always going to be two other major chords that will harmonize with that chord and that's where we come up with the three primary chords. And so what we're going to do in the next clip, we're going to show you how to find those other two chords that harmonize with the key of A, or with the A major chord, and I refer to this as the three chord method. For the three chord method, we only have a few steps to determine the three primary chords in any key. So if we're looking for the key of A, the three chords in the key of A, Step one is we find an A note on the bottom string. So that's where finding or counting notes comes in handy. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. That's step one. We found an A note, single note, on that bottom string. Step two is we play a three note sequence. Like so. And what that is, it's the fifth fret and then just move over along the fifth fret to the fifth string and then up two frets on that fifth string. Five, five, seven are the frets. And you might want to get acclimated to hearing that sequence. Dun, dun, dun. Now the, those three letter notes will correspond to the three chords, the three primary chords, in the key of A. So uh, A, and 
then that fifth string, fifth fret, uh, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, A, D, D sharp, E, A, D, and E. Now we're going to strum. We'll do a one strum to start. A, D, and E are the three chords in the key of A. There's A, D, E, and then we'll go back to A. Now we'll apply uh, a basic strum pattern. Uh, so you can hear, it's going to sound kind of folksy, but uh, you're going to hear all these chords harmonize together. One, two, ready, go. Now hopefully you heard in that progression, even though it was very basic, kind of folksy sounding, hopefully you heard how the A, D, and E chords harmonize or work together. And with that foundation, uh, you can start to be a little bit more creative with the key of A, because uh, that three chord combination, A, D, and E, is specifically uh, aligned with the key of A. So you can arrange those chords in different running orders and still be in the key of A. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in the next clip. We're going to have another progression in the key of A. We're going to extend it a bit and throw in some variations. And uh, that'll give you an idea how you can start applying your own variations as well down the road. Now this three chord method will work to determine the three primary chords in any key. All you have to do is find the key you're looking for, the letter note of that key on the bottom string, and play that three note sequence. So you can play it along any fret. So next let's go to the key of G major. Um, we have a G chord that we like the sound of. What are the other two chords that will harmonize with the key of G? If you want, you can pause the video right now See if you can determine those chords on your own. Otherwise, here's the method applied to the key of G. So we've got a G chord. We need to find G on the bottom string. E, F, F sharp, G. Then play the three note sequence. In this case, it'll be third fret, third fret, fifth fret. And those three letter notes are G, C, and D. So the key of G, Doing a one strum approach to warm up. And a strum pattern, a basic one. do in the next clip. Again, uh, we'll apply uh, variations uh, to the key of G, a little bit longer progression, and you can see how the variations can be applied in a different key, this time the key of G. Now using the three chord method with the bottom string, you can determine any of the 12 keys, uh, but you can also use the three chord method starting with the fifth or the fourth strings as well. 
And why you might want to consider that is it might save you a little time from counting up for certain keys. For example, the key of D major. If we were to use the bottom string, uh, which uh, for D, we would be up on the 10th fret, 6th string, 10th fret. Now you could do that and the method will work 100% fine. You just have a little bit more counting. That's a little bit more time. Also a little bit more room for error, the more counting you have to do. Uh, but you can also uh, use either the 5th or the 4th strings. You just have to find a D note and apply the same method. So if you want, you can pause the video right now and see if you can determine the three primary chords in the key of D on your own uh, and also which string might get you there quicker. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to show you right now uh, how to do it. So uh, again, D on the bottom string, 10th fret, that'll work fine. If we find a D on the 5th string, that'll be along the 5th fret position. That'll work fine as well. A uh, little less counting to do up on the 5th fret. In fact, you hear the notes are exactly the same. But what about the 4th string? Well, the 4th string open is D. And again, it's a symmetric thing. Uh, so if we think 10, 10 plus 2, 12, or 5, 5 plus 2, 7, you could use the open 4th string, 0, 0 plus 2. And again, we've got the same pitches either way. It's just that using the open strings gets us there a little bit quicker. The three uh, primary notes in the key of D are D, G, and A. And that'll correspond to D, G, and A chords. And we go back to D to end it. And let's uh, show you how it'll sound with the strum. through a few progressions now we can throw in uh, some additional challenges uh, you don't have to strum all the time to write a song what if you applied some finger style technique to the three primary chords in a key so um, doing that with the same uh, key key of D and the same chords uh, check out this finger style progression At this point, everything sounds kind of folksy sounding. Again, we're getting a good foundation. But to get acclimated to hearing how these uh, certain chords and certain keys harmonize together, it's a, it's a great foundation. It's a great first step. Uh, but what we'll do in the next clip, uh, we'll again apply a variation to a progression in the key of D. But this time, we'll apply basic finger style technique. Next, we'll figure out the three chords in the key of C. So if you want to do it on your own, uh, you can pause the video. Otherwise, applying that three chord method, uh, the quickest string to get there using the bottom three strings would be the fifth string, which is A, uh, but C, A, A sharp, B, C, C is only three frets higher. And then we play the three note sequence from that fifth string. And those three letter notes are C, F, and G. So we transfer that to the chords. C, F, and G. Now one note on the F, there are a lot of ways to play an F chord. You could play the full bar F chord, which is all six strings. The easy F chord, 
strings, just the top four strings. Um, a lot of times I settle for what I call middle F, which is just focusing on the middle four strings. Uh, but if we apply the strum pattern to this uh, progression, that in the next clip again we'll extend the progression a little bit uh, show you uh, another variation uh, with the progression in the key of C major If you made it this far into the lesson, you pretty much have the three chord method down. And in addition to that, uh, you also have set a great foundation because we have worked on progressions using the most popular keys in guitar music, and you have heard how the primary chords harmonize together with those keys. Uh, so the next thing is to show you a shortcut method for determining keys. Uh, the reason why we didn't start with the shortcut method is because um, these shortcut methods are not 100% foolproof, uh, but they will work for the popular keys in guitar, and you may come across them down the road, and we don't want you to wonder why I didn't bring those up in this lesson. Um, the three chord method is 100% foolproof, uh, but there is a shortcut method that works, again, for the most popular keys in guitar music. Those keys would be C, A, G, E, and D. In other words, the word caged. And uh, how you use the shortcut method is you simply start with the key you're looking for, count up the fingers, one, two, three, four, and the thumb would be five. The one, four, and five numbers will sync up to the uh, three primary chords or the three primary notes of the key. For example, uh, the key of A, that's part of the word caged. A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. A, D, and E are your three primary chords. Uh, the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, just count up the alphabet, C, D, E, F, G, C, F, and G would be your 1, 4, and 5 chords, or the primary chords. And one more, how about the key of D, D, E, F, G, and then back to A at the beginning of the alphabet, D, E, F, G, A, D, G, A would be the three primary chords in the key of D. So that's a quick shortcut method, uh, but as I mentioned, it is not 100% foolproof. The three chord method is, that's why we started with it. Uh, let's give an example of how uh, sometimes the shortcut methods could backfire on you. Um, what if you had to determine uh, the three chords in the key of F? So if you want, you can pause the video, figure it out. Now, if you use the shortcut method, you would go F, G, A, B, C, and you would say F, B, and C. However, that is incorrect. Uh, if you use the three chord method with F, you would find out that it's F, B flat, and C. See, these shortcut methods sometimes, most of the time, do not take in consideration those keys uh, where there are certain sharp or flattened notes involved. Um, so again, we start you off with the three chord method because it works all the time. Uh, but if you ever do want to use the shortcut method, again, it works for the word caged, C-A-G-E-D, and that'll get you there. One more note on this, uh, you're not going to have to use the method all the time down the road. Once you get acclimated to playing these keys, uh, and you stick with it down the road, uh, someone will say play the key of C, you're just going to know what to do, at least for the primary chords. So uh, the method though for beginners is a great way to get your foot in the door uh, to start becoming a little bit more self-sufficient with songwriting.
Now, if you decided to start writing songs right now with what you know about songwriting, all of your songs would sound sort of folksy or country-like because we've only worked with major keys. So now that we've got this foundation, uh, we can now sort of expand a little bit um, into different styles or moods with keys. And the next step will be to start working with minor keys. And the good news is that the same three chord method you can apply to determine the three minor chords in a minor key. All you have to do is substitute minor chords for major chords. Uh, so going back to our original example, which was uh, the key of A, A, D, and E, those would be our, would be our primary notes. Uh, if you want to write the song in the key of A minor, again you find A, play the three notes, and just substitute minor chords for those three notes. So the three primary chords in the key of A minor would be A minor, D minor, E minor, and back to A minor. So hopefully for you things get a lot more interesting. Usually the minor keys uh, are more interesting uh, to listen to than the uh, happy major keys. Um, and let's put together a strum pattern here. Uh, same basic progression, but this time with minor chords in a minor key. So hopefully, when compared to what we've been working on, you can hear that obvious difference in mood or tone between a major or minor key. Uh, also, we've got the option to uh, apply fingerstyle technique to a progression. Here's how uh, a progression in the key of A minor would sound applying fingerstyle. Again, there's also that concept of applying variations. Uh, again, you can rearrange these chords in any order you want. Uh, so what we'll do in the next clip, uh, we'll do an extended progression in the key of A minor with some variations. Now there are only three open minor chords you can play on guitar. That would be A minor, D minor, and E minor. And we just went over in the previous example uh, using those three chords in the key of A minor, uh, which is probably guitar-wise the easiest key to play because there are only open minor chords used. But for every other minor key, uh, you're going to have to use some type of bar chord shape. And there are 11 other minor keys. So uh, if you haven't done a lot of work with movable minor chord shapes, uh, what's coming up will be a great exercise for you. Uh, we're going to next determine the three primary chords in the key of G minor. Now, if you recall the three primary chords in the key of G, you just have to substitute minor for major chords. But if you don't, uh, applying that method, starting with G, G, C, D are the primary notes. And for a minor key, we just substitute minor chords for those notes. So our first chord in the key of G minor would be, here's the first bar chord shape. And then we go to C minor, another bar chord shape. And then in this case, we're going to move up to D minor, two frets higher. We're going to bar D minor for this progression. So if we did apply the strum pattern here,
So again, a different perspective with sort of a sad, serious tone or mood, but also, again, some work with some movable bar chord shapes. So in the next clip, we'll extend this progression in the key of G minor, and we'll throw in some variations as well. Another variation you can throw into playing these progressions is to throw in different chord voicings. Uh, a chord voicing is basically um, another way to play a certain chord, another option. Uh, for example, with A minor, uh, you have a couple of chord voicings. You have the standard open A minor chord shape. You could also do a bar A minor uh, along the fifth fret position. Uh, they're identical chords. Except for this voicing, you have that sort of higher register going. So mixing and matching different chord voicings, again, it's another variation you can throw in. And we're going to do that next with the key of D minor. Uh, so step one, uh, applying the method to determine the primary chords in the key of D minor, um, the quickest way would be to use the open fourth string. Again, if you remember the key of D major, D, G, A, the key of D minor, D minor, G minor, A minor. So as far as uh, what we're going to play in this progression, we have an open D minor. We also have a D minor up at the fifth fret position. And they, there is some differences uh, between those two chords. So if you're making your own song, you, you play whatever one uh, floats your boat, whatever one sounds better for you. Um, the next chord will be G minor. Now the other voicing for G minor is a little high up. So we're going to stick with G minor on the third fret. For A minor, as we mentioned earlier, there's two voicings there. So um, again, uh, mixing and matching different chord voicings can add a little bit more color or variation to a progression. Uh, but let's work out a basic progression in D minor uh, with the open D minor, the bar G minor, and then we'll bar the A minor. Here's how that'll sound. And what we'll do in the next progression, uh, we will again extend the progression uh, with some variations, but we'll also throw in um, some different chord voicings, uh, all in the key of D minor. For our next and final key, we're going to determine the three chords in the key of B minor. Another popular key for guitar music, uh, applying the three chord method, we would start on the fifth string, A, A sharp, B, three note sequence, and again we're applying the three chord method, not a shortcut method because Again, the shortcut method only works for the word caged, the keys of C, A, G, E, and D. Um, using the three chord method, we come up with B, E, F sharp. If we were used to use the shortcut method, it would be B, C, D, E, F. B, E, F, F would be incorrect. Uh, so B, E, F sharp, transferring those to minor chord shapes. Uh, we have a couple of voicings for B minor. This is the, sort of the standard one along the second fret, but you do have an option to play this B minor chord voicing up at the seventh fret. For E minor, we have a 
fret choice with open E or the E minor voicing at the seventh fret position as well, different chord shape. And then for F sharp minor, I would suggest to stick with this one along the second fret. The other one's a little, a little too high up on the ninth fret there. So with that, here's the basic progression. We're going to stick with the um, chords at the lower frets here. that in the next clip will extend the progression in the key of B minor and we'll also throw in uh, maybe one variation with the chord voicing as well. Once you have this lesson down, you can now come up with a three chord progression in any major or minor key. In other words, you can write a basic three chord song in 24 potential keys, 12 major keys and 12 minor keys. Uh, the next step up, what we'll do with the next lesson, is we'll expand the amount of chords you can write a song with from three to six, and in addition, we'll show you how you can combine major and minor keys with a concept called relative keys.